Our ancestors sailed across oceans in leaky wooden boats and conquered continents. They healed the sick and fed the hungry. They measured the span of the heavens and the weight of the atom. They survived 40,000 years of plague, famine, invasion. We will survive nihilism and despair because we are their children. We are Europa's children. Hello, I'm Kanaz Phylon, and the existence of our people is not negotiable. Hello and welcome to Europa's Children. This is Kanaz Phylon. This is our first episode of our podcast and we'll tackle a question that comes up for me very often. It's Kanaz why did you become a white supremacist? Yeah, I get this one more often than I'd expect, but I'm never quite sure what what am I supposed to say? I mean, how do you respond to a question like that? I mean, a good place to start might be, well, what do you mean by white supremacist? What's white supremacism? I hear this term all the time, but I'm not really clear on what exactly a white supremacist is supposed to do. Suppose I say, all right, you know, I believe that a Christian baker should be allowed to say to a gay couple, I don't want to bake your wedding cake, and we should show him the same sensitivity we're expected to show, for example, for Somali immigrants who still practice female genital mutilation. You know, maybe make some allowances for this man's faith, you know, I think in this case, not getting a cake is a better ending than not having a clitoris, all things considered. You know, suppose I said, well, why don't we respect his freedoms and maybe they can get a cake somewhere else? Well, okay, now I am a white supremacist. Now, let's say I think that, well, while I feel that everybody should have, as much as possible, the right to express themselves as they see fit, so long as they're not hurting other people, and I think if a trans person genuinely feels more comfortable living as a trans, a, a male-born person who feels more comfortable living as a woman, I can support, you know, I can use their pronouns. I believe, you know, they should be treated with the same respect I would give to any other human being. You know, I believe that they should not be victims of violence or persecution. You know, I, I think those are all fine things, but maybe we shouldn't put a 50-year-old sex offender who weighs 240 pounds and who just started transitioning a few months ago in a women's prison, maybe that puts the women in that prison at undue risk. Now, if I say that, I am a white supremacist. I'm also a transphobe and a homophobe and a bunch of other things, but above all else, I'm a white supremacist. Let's say I, I'm worried about immigration. I, you know, I'm sympathetic to immigrants. My daughter goes to school with many children of first and second generation immigrant children. They are lovely children. Their parents are hardworking people. I have no problem with immigrants. I understand, you know, when Donald Trump said some of them are good people, I would go further. Most of them are good people that are just trying to get ahead. I feel sympathy for them. I, you know, I would encourage anybody to have sympathy for the immigrant population, but I also have concerns about demographics about the instability which can result from these cultural shifts. I have concerns about the way immigration is used to depress American worker wages. And that's, you'll note I said here American workers, not white American workers, because all American workers feel the blow from this. But when I say, you know, well, maybe we should start tightening up immigration requirements, oh boy, I am a white supremacist. Now let's say I like reading books like by people like Shakespeare, Homer. I like reading Ben Franklin, the works of the Founding Fathers, what they've started calling dead white men. Now, the European canon, you know, is white supremacist. And that idea of Western civilization, you know, that whole thing that started with Homer in Athens, went on through the French Enlightenment, the Reformation, Counter-Reformation, a lot of the ideas of democracy and freedom that we have today, 
I think those are good ideas. I think generally we have gotten ourselves in more trouble when we failed to live up to our ideals. The problem wasn't our ideals. The problem was our innate failings as human beings. That makes me a white supremacist. Now, when I listen to Bach and I say, wow, that's amazing. You know, and I feel that same sense of accomplishment a black man might feel when he's listening to something brilliant by Miles Davis. Does that make me a white supremacist? Suppose I look at the Notre Dame de Paris and say, wow, what a towering human accomplishment. I am so proud of the fact, you know, my ancestors built this marvelous monument of stone. Does that make me a white supremacist? I mean, when Ted Cruz beat Beto O'Rourke in the Texas Senate election, George Chicarella Maher, he's a professor formerly at Drexel, who tweeted, all I want for Christmas is white genocide, tweeted, White people re-elected Ted Cruz. If there's a better argument for the abolition of whiteness, I haven't heard it. So, white people voting for a Cuban guy over a white guy is now white supremacism. Okay. I think it's pretty clear that white supremacism is a blanket term for everything a good leftist ally is supposed to dislike. And if you refuse to get with the program, if you deviate it from it in any step, you, my friend, are a white supremacist. Gavin McInnes sodomizes himself with a dildo on camera, welcomes non-white members into his organization, Newsweek calls the proud white proud boys multicultural white supremacists. Dr. Rachel Fulton Brown, she's a professor at the University of Chicago, She's written accurately, Medieval Europe looked to the East as the center of civilization and culture. She's pointed out St. Morris, whose cross is often used by British nationalists, was a Moor he was traditionally portrayed as African in Medieval and Renaissance art. Now, Dr. Rachel Fulton Brown is a white supremacist, and this is largely due to her friendship with Milo Yiannopoulos. And Milo, who is a gay Jew who's married to a black man and who in fact brags, I've had more black dick in me than the entire Kardashian family, is a white supremacist. Okay, by that standard, I am probably a white supremacist. Now, back in the real world, I have never stated that white people are superior, that we are supreme, that we were destined to world, rule the world. I have no interest in the white man's burden. I think there are differences between cultural and ethnic groups. I think ancestry matters, and I think a strong relationship with one's heritage is a good thing. I didn't come to that conclusion from reading Mein Kampf. I came to it through an African diaspora tradition. It's one I've written books on, Haitian voodoo. And Haitian voodoo is service Guinea. It's service to ancestral Africa. The Loire grouped into nations, nations that mark their origins. It's the Daome, Yoruba, the Congo cultures. You can trace many of the spirits back to specific regions in Africa. Ogu Badagri is the Ogu honored in Badagri, which is a city. Dumbala Wedo, Dumbala of the Wedo River. The slaves of St. Domingue saved everything they could of their traditions, their practices, and their spirits and those spirits went on to help them forge Haiti in blood and fire. I've seen firsthand the power of a strong cultural identity and an ancestral tradition. It wasn't at Unite the Right. You could see it at a Brooklyn peristyle. I mean, people are telling me there's no such thing as whiteness, but there have been white Americans in the New World for centuries. We've identified European people as white since before 1790 when our Constitution offered citizenship to any free white person. When I look in the mirror, I see a white man staring back at me. When the world looks at me, they see a white man. And when they look at my red-haired, blue-eyed, freckle-faced seven-year-old daughter, they see a little white girl. Whether or not you like it, 200 million white Americans exist, and we're not going anywhere. And about those white Americans, I mean, I'm seeing white kids complaining white people have no culture. We stole all our accomplishments. I've seen them apologize, 
beg. I've seen them grovel. They're collecting axes of oppression like Pokemons, hoping they can be freed of the original sin of whiteness. But all that wailing, all that gnashing of teeth, does sweet fuck all to solve anything. It doesn't bring us together. It doesn't address the economic inequalities. It just dismisses them as white supremacism's byproduct. And amidst all of that owning a privilege, you know, doesn't anybody else see noblesse oblige? My wife has a cultural studies degree, and she's pointed to American exceptionalism. If white Americans can't be the greatest people ever, we've got to be the worst. I mean, all of these efforts to dismantle whiteness, to challenge whiteness, to confront and overthrow whiteness, they still center around white people. My vision's different. I see three major groups currently residing in the United States, blacks, Hispanics, and whites. There are other smaller groups, but around 90% of our population falls in one of those three categories. There are many subgroups within those groups. Within the black community, we see Caribbeans, African immigrants, African Americans, Ecuadorians, Salvadorians, Mexicans, Cubans in the Hispanic community. You've got like a Boston Brahmin with a Harvard degree probably doesn't have a whole lot in common with a good old boy from Alabama. I mean, I think we keep seeing this in elections. But within the larger framework of American society, I mean, people in these groups see themselves and they're seen as black, white, or Hispanic. We share common interests at times. At times, our interests conflict. We've solved our differences violently in the past, but we've also settled them peacefully. We can live alongside each other as equals. We can respect and honor our differences. We don't have to hate each other. But we don't need to hate ourselves. In fact, we can't love anybody else's culture till we love our own. You, you can't respect anybody else's ancestors till you respect your own. Right now, we're in the middle of a crisis. White America is dying. We've gone below our demographic replacement rates. Our population is shrinking. Every day, 85 white men take themselves out by suicide. The opiate epidemic is eating poor white America alive. You know, we're dying of opiates. We're dying of suicide. We're dying of alcoholism. What we're dying of is fucking despair. Our people are dying of despair. And we have to do something about it. And the solutions to the problems that lie within the white community are only going to be found within the white community. We have to fix this ourselves. We ha and we can't do that if you won't let us acknowledge who we are, if you won't let us say, it's okay to be white. That is all we are asking for. Does that make us white supremacists? You decide. I'm Kanaz Violin, and this has been Europa's Children. Thank you for listening.